just so many things that socially awkward about growing up for me and the dog family dog was always there like would sit on would sleep in my room on my bed that was Bernal beast owner steph miller welcome to storied san francisco i'm your host jeff hunt all throughout september we're focusing on small business owners some are new to the show and some are revisits with past guests in this podcast you'll get to know Atherton native Steph Miller. Steph talks about her parents meeting on the East Coast and coming to California together. She takes us through her childhood growing up on the peninsula and coming up to the city to eat and to go to Giants games at Candlestick. Steph ends this episode telling us about her college years in New Orleans and her eventual return to the Bay Area. Please check back on Thursday for part two. We are hella excited to announce the launch of the BFF.FM podcast network. This show is part of an inaugural group of some really, really great podcasts. Please go to BFF.FM slash podcast to learn more. And special thanks to Amanda Guest and Lily Sloan, both of whom are alumni of this show, for putting the network together and asking us to be part of it. Here's Steph. My mom is from New Jersey, uh, from an Episcopalian family, and my dad is from Long Island, New York, and um, Jewish, and the two of them met in college at Alfred University in uh, upstate New York, and their families were not super um, approving of their decision to get married. Can I ask to what extent... They were not just like religious differences right right um but well to the extent that they weren't gonna um prohibit it as no one really can do that here um but to the point of them not being super supportive and when my dad i think it was his sister's husband was out here doing um a stint at stanford he's a history professor from michigan they came out to visit and then sort of just never looked back that was it that was it then he was like i'm gonna look for a job out here he's an attorney by day and a jazz musician by night your dad is yeah oh my god what does he play piano okay and he plays now he plays with my sister who's a jazz singer wow So they, um, yeah, I mean, they always kind of jokingly say they had to move all the way across country and kind of create their own sense of family on this coast because their families were not super happy. Makes perfect sense. And I think um, it's also a decision that they made. I mean, we were kind of exposed to all the traditions in each religion, but my sister and I wound up being pretty atheist. Right. Right. There you go. Because we didn't want to go through that. Right. We we sort of wound up feeling like religion shouldn't play a part. When did your parents move out? Do you know? Oh, God. I wish my sister was here now because she's way better with dates. But um, my dad graduated um, from law school, Syracuse University. And... um, I believe he did a stint in the appellate courts in New York. Okay. I hope he doesn't really listen to this. <laughs> he's going to be correcting me the whole time. Um, and then, and my mom um, was a French major and came out, they came out for his job. The, what's so amazing about his career is he... Um, got a, a job at a little law firm in San Francisco called Hanson Bridget Marcus, and um, which still is in existence. It was probably like 12 lawyers at the time, and now it's over 300. Whoa. And he has never left. Okay. And he became um, the general counsel for, he was a public agency attorney. Okay. And he, um, his biggest client's the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh. And Sam Trans. So your dad was the your dad was the lawyer for the Golden Gate Bridge. Let's just say that. Yeah. He had to defend it against all the lawsuits that the other bridges brought against the Golden Gate Bridge. Exactly. Let's just say that. Yeah. Exactly. Let's just do that. Yeah. Um, so 
so we it's fine that we don't have exact dates but you must 19, know um i mean so i was born in 1973 my sister was born in 1970 and they moved out when she was born so okay. I, they they came out here in 1970 okay and they're still here they're still here Where? they're still in the same house that i grew up in there you go and like i said my dad um well he says he's retired I haven't seen proof of that ever. <laughs> um, but he was at the same law firm for that entire time. Wow. Um, and my mom became a French teacher. Where are they? They're down in uh, near Palo Alto okay. on the peninsula. Okay. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, if you come to my family house, you everything sort of looks the same. The same. <laughs> So they had the one kid, your sister, in '70, and then then you came along in '73. Mm-hmm. Um, what? So so you grew up in in this house I near did. Palo Alto. Well, um, yes. I don't okay. really like to. This is one of my like stigmatized issues. Is um, we grew up in Atherton, okay. and I just want to point out that they may be the only liberal Democrats in Atherton, right. but. For anyone who's from here, when I say that, um, there there used to be, at least when I was in high school, um, more of a writing off of me. Like, oh, you must not. You you know, you come from affluence and you have nothing to right. contribute. Right. And you're like, no, I'm an individual. Yeah. Actually. And I'm like, I and I honestly, it was a beautiful upbringing. I had lots of friends on my street. And at the time that they bought their house, it was... It, I mean, it was still a wonderful neighborhood, but with there was no dot com boom in Silicon Valley and right. mansions of that size. My mm-hmm. parents' house is the exact same little ranch, California ranch style house nice. that was there when they bought it. Yeah, um, understood. Still, you grew up there. Mm-hmm. What was it like? What did, what kind of things did you do? You said you you mentioned friends on your street. Friends, like, neighborhood, like, you know, the night, I don't know what year you were born, but um, similar 73. Age. 73? Yeah. Are we, like, separated I think birth? we're the same person. <laughs> <laughs> There's a mirror. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Like, you're, like, the male version of me. Kind of. And, and my, old, my older brother was born in 70. Oh, shut up. Yeah, so. And, you know, my, my son, I have a seven-year-old, we, Alan and I have a seven-year-old son and he showed me this face app Mm -hmm. and the weird thing is so you can make your face male or you know what i'm talking about right right i kind of looked like you (laughs) (laughs) seriously when i did it i was like oh wow okay good. i'll show you later you're gonna be shocked sure okay um so yeah i did a lot of bike riding with my friend katie bryan um we were free range Mm -hmm. Honestly, mm-hmm. like my dad was an attorney in the city. He commuted every day and was gone from the house for the majority of our school week. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was a teacher part time, but she was still really busy. And then and she was also doing all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the sort of child rearing in that sense. My right. dad would step in with the sports. Mm-hmm. We learned, at, like, I was sure I was going to be a professional baseball player. Oh, shit. Man. A yeah. male professional. Like, right. I just didn't realize I was a girl for a really long time. Um, I think the most disappointing moment in my life was when I found out there were no women in professional baseball. Mm-hmm. It was mm-hmm. way worse than Santa Claus situation. Right. Way and worse. that's before League of Their Own came out. It was before League of Your Own. Yeah. That was one of the was best a, movies ever. Big, yeah. I was going to say, was that a big deal <laughs> in your course. life when it came? Besides just being a rad movie. It like, was a great movie. And it was, yeah, it was hilarious. Did you still have your baseball dream at that point? Or had you given it When up? that came up? No. No. Yeah. I kind of let that go. Okay. I became more of a soccer player at a certain point. Okay. But, um, yeah, we didn't have, we didn't. I, it was idyllic in the way that we could wander off and come back before dark. Latch key. Yeah. Yeah. Total latch key. We had keys around a string on our neck mm-hmm. after school. You let yourself in. Mm-hmm. I would um, usually have a friend over because my parents were never there. It was like the house that you could just chill out. And we would make um, Nestle's Quick 
chocolate milk. Yes, you would. With like three quarters of the cup filled with the chocolate powder and a little dash of milk at mm-hmm. top and then just spoon that out mm-hmm. and be completely wired just like while we kind of watch Brady Bunch and yeah. um, and then you're ate like, Hostess Cupcakes Later or something. in life, you're like, I survived somehow. I, I know. I was really like, how, how, but, how with that kind yeah. of nutritional... You're basically mainlining sugar yeah. at that point. That's basically what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every did day. You, Did you end up going to public schools, or or what was your schooling like? My mom taught at the local um, Episcopal school, so I went to private, kind of like, not Catholic school, but uniforms, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, We went to chapel twice a week. Mm -hmm. The Jewish kids would sit instead of kneel, Mm -hmm. but I kneeled because I just didn't want to be different. Right. Um. Was that K through 12 that you went to that K school? K through, uh, actually kindergarten and first I went to public school. Then my mom got the job at Phillips Brooks. So we left. And I would say that second grade was the best year of my growing up when we changed, I changed to that school. And I would, li- I would live that year over. That would be my version of heaven. And why is that? Talk, talk. It was just such a great year. Um, and, and the sad, I'm just going to say this my son's going into second grade this year and he's not going to experience anything like that because it's all distance learning at home Mm -hmm. and i'm so bummed no sports it's like when you're a girl and you're still a boy you know what i'm talking about right the sports and i'm playing on teams and all my friends and we're just rough and tumble and you're getting dirty and it, it it's that time in a girl's life probably a boys too but where you're really just exactly who you are and there's no sort of understanding of a gender difference Mm -hmm. and um the change of school was really helpful i was so shy Mm -hmm. so shy to the point that people kind of commented to my parents that they thought there might be something a little wrong with Mm me um and i just I felt way more comfortable in a smaller classroom Mm -hmm. with a really wonderful male teacher, Mm -hmm. Mr. Brackett. Love you, Mr. Brackett. (laughs) (laughs) I'll never forget you. Um, And it was just just one of those sort of perfect situations for uh, for me, Mm -hmm. being so shy. My sister is this really precocious, talented, theatrical you know star jazz singer jazz singer literally yeah yeah okay. and she was an mfa like she was an acting teacher in new york city and so oh. she obviously has no problems being the center of attention okay and i just felt overwhelmed all the time mm-hmm. and so sports was one sports was a great avenue for outlet or what do you yeah. call it like a totally. yeah, something that gave you comfort um wh- I, i'm curious were dogs part of your life? Oh as my Brina? God! Good point. Let's talk about that. Our family dogs were always like my buddies, my best friends. Oh, I was a bedwetter. Okay. To the like, just so many things that socially awkward mm-hmm. about growing up mm-hmm. for me, and the dog family dog was always there. Like nice. would sit on, would sleep in my room on my bed. My sister, unfortunately, is allergic to dogs, mm. and we had them anyway. Mm-hmm. Interesting choice, mom and dad. We often <laughs> wonder. I mean, she had asthma. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. But we're an animal family. Um, yeah. yeah, the dogs were like my besties. Was it more one of your parents than the other? Or did they both? They both of... loved. Okay. Loved dogs. So you, did you, was it the kind of growing up, you kind of, guys all, kind of always had a dog? Always. Yeah. I don't remember a time... That I that I didn't live with an animal, yeah. And what uh, breeds or mixes or they mutts? were our first dog was a golden retriever, and then we always had black labs of some sort. Mm-hmm. The the most, uh, I guess my favorite star dog growing up was a rescue that they found in the newspaper. Remember those things, the newspaper ads? Yeah. Um, so I just remember we drove out to this, I don't even know where it was. When I was a kid, I thought it was forever. You know, it was probably Santa Cruz. 
Right. Um, but it seemed like we had tr- driven across country. Mm-hmm. Um, and Wendy was her name. Oh. Um, although she didn't have any kind of gas problem. But <laughs> Wendy. Okay. I'm like, not Wendy. Wendy. And now I look back and I'm like, what was that? Why? Did we call her Wendy? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay. But you know that song? Do, 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 do. That was her song. Okay. Anyway, so she was a black lab golden retriever mix. Oh, wow. And I think that this family was breeding one or the other. Mm-hmm. And they, I'm pretty sure they were giving away the litter. Oh, wow. Greatest mix ever, mm-hmm. Wendy. She, so was my, she, was, she was my buddy. Big dogs for Yeah, always big dogs. Kid. Always yeah. big dogs, yeah. yeah. Um, we had to give Malamar that first dog. <laughs> Apparently, we were lied to. They had to put um, right. uh, Malamar. You would know the cookie. She mm-hmm. was named after the cookie. Mm-hmm. They put her down because she bit one of our um, friends mm-hmm. in the butt. As they were, and now I know, being a dog trainer, like the dog was from a pet store, mm-hmm. puppy mill. On top of that, zero training. Right. And kids running around her. Yeah. She was kind of set up to fail. Mm-hmm. But they told us that she was going to an old couple who wouldn't have so much activity in the home. Okay. Um, but later I found out that she was euthanized. Yeah. Oh. I know. I'm not, I'm not upset with my parents. But I just, I'm telling you this story. It's, I mean, I don't know why it's, it's not funny. But I'm laughing. I think I just, I sometimes giggle at what my parents what how i grew up or and it's just part of your your story with dogs yeah no matter what um okay i don't want to skip over anything but i'm curious as a kid growing up on the peninsula did you guys come to san francisco yes do you remember either your first time or do you remember any you know uh, stories of coming here that stand out okay san francisco was like this first of all we're huge San Francisco Giants fans. So anytime we came to a game, um, I mean, my dad is such a Giants fan that he was a New York Giants, like Polo Fields Giants fan. Like went to games. At went to games. Yeah. Can like recite World Series moments at the Polo Fields. Um, he jokes that he moved here with it to follow his team. So, okay, so a couple things. One thing I noticed is that, you know, you guys – probably know this too it's like 20 to 30 degrees warmer down on the peninsula right so we would all huddle into the car we'd often take caltrain because my dad was representing caltrain we better get on the train okay um we'd have our shorts and t-shirts and we'd have like ski gear Mm -hmm. to go to candlestick Mm -hmm. um we'd have the gear blankets just blankets and and scarves and hats and mittens Mm -hmm. Get to the game with our pictures of hot chocolate. My mom would have coffee. And I honestly thought that watching baseball was like a suffering experience. Like you Hmm. had to suffer to watch baseball and this was part of it. Mm -hmm. Like nobody was really comfortable for like three and a half up to four hours. And the folks that I've talked to that that grew up going to, including my fiance that grew up going to Candlestick Games, that's exactly... Yeah, that's her that's memory, the sentiment. right? It wasn't only what was happening on the field. It was like what you're talking about. Oh, no, totally. Yeah. I mean, let alone that the Giants were horrible at that yes, time they that I a was a kid. Yeah. Where they were not good. And the fact that my dad took it so personally mm-hmm. so that there were times when we knew we couldn't talk to him for a little bit after right. each game. Right. Um, it was just, it was rough, but I also kind of like feel this, this, um, like, I don't know, a badge that we got through. Yeah. That now it's like this, this, this AT and T park situation is like. It's like a resort. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, Compared. and I appreciate it, but I'm kind of like, <laughs> right. where's the suffering? Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. dues that you paid. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And then the city. My dad worked in the city, mm-hmm. um, and so we would come up to see him go to his office the image that sticks in my mind because we're always going downtown to his office and like driving through that part of town is i i couldn't wait even though this is so not what i do or what i ever wanted to do but i couldn't wait to be a woman a businesswoman 
in like a skirt suit with sneakers on. Yeah. That was the image. Like the, yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Working girls. Melanie Griffith? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't wait. Because that's (laughs) what the, all these people were hustling to Muni or hustling. They didn't have, we didn't have Bart then, but, and running with their, their sneakers and Mm -hmm. their suits and their briefcases. Okay. So this must be a little later after you've already kind of given up your baseball dream. And now you're like, (laughs) That's what I, I'm not sure if it was like my dream as much as it was just like that's what you do in the city right. and right. that's because that was what I was exposed to mm-hmm. was that downtown business section mm-hmm. although my mom would you know we always grew, we grew up going to like museums and seeing art but yeah everything that was very city there was a little bit of a sophistication and uh we were go. My parents never shied away from taking us out to like really nice restaurants. I was going to ask about restaurants. Yeah, what, like the we... North Beach restaurant. I feel like my dad walks in and he's like a mob boss. Right. They're like David, Mr. Miller, um, and some of the old wait staff um, remember us from when we were little. Awesome. It's really cute. Yeah. What other kinds of restaurants would you guys go to? That was our, like, number one. But my dad also was a big fan of the Tadish Grill. Mm-hmm. Um, what else in, in the city? I mean, North Beach was just sort of one of those places that we would... You know, I loved driving past the Condor and having mm-hmm. that woman with the li- the blinking boobies. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was so great. Mm-hmm. And legs, like, flying... I loved all the eccentric... Yeah parts of the city okay the the building with the furniture hanging out on the side anyway, yeah so. i don't know the city was really a special trip um it, it and was it, always something and it you was liked. impactful yeah and i and i do as i got into high school i i i really wanted to leave i didn't want to be where we were okay even though we we're so privileged and i'm very grateful for the upbringing i wanted nothing to do with the peninsula so where did you did you go to college? I went to I graduated from Tulane University in New Orleans. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I fir- I went to a small liberal arts school for my first year in Maine. Okay. Called Bates College, and um, I promptly dropped out and came back home. Worked for a little bit. I was waitressing down in Palo Alto, at Ramona's Pizzeria. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of found my grounding again and. I will say that I followed a boyfriend to Tulane. Okay. So it wasn't really the um, sort of academic, well thought out process, but I have never looked back. I learned how to play guitar there. I, I, I'm absolutely in love with the city of New Orleans and I never wanted to leave. Do you want to talk about your time in New Orleans at all? Besides, you, you said you learned to play guitar, but like, how long were you there? And, and I was there for five years. I, I transferred as a sophomore, and then I um, actually dropped out again while I was there just to um, experience it all. I, I put my parents through a lot uh, with my college experience. They, they were always very accepting, mm-hmm. though, very accepting. Okay. Like, I don't know why. I guess they had faith that I would come back to it. Mm-hmm. And when I did come back to it, you know, I graduated with honors and in history and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And I really, really focused. But while I was there, I was a barista. That's where I love learned my love of a really nice artisan cup of coffee, okay. like pinholes, mm-hmm. which I can't live without. Um, and it's just what a, what a difference New Orleans is from Atherton. Right. <laughs> right. Can't get much more diametrically opposed. So you, that must have been the nineties. Uh it was the nineties. Yeah. So, yeah. So you it was left before Katrina. Well before Katrina, right. Actually so. well before Katrina. Yeah. yeah. So you got that pre Katrina experience in. I did. Um you said you were there five ish years. Mm-hmm. What was it that brought you did you come back here and, and I came back. What was it that I did. I did not know what I was gonna do with my life. Uh I didn't want to be in the food service or sort of like hotel industry it it did I started to see how connected in terms of like old family name stuff in the south 
I wasn't going to grad school. I had thought about um, going to get my MSW, but um, got sidetracked. Okay. <laughs> Didn't follow that. Mm -hmm. And um, I came home and my dad said, why don't you come work at the law firm? That was Steph Miller. On the next episode of Story in San Francisco, Steph will share the story of her return to the Bay Area. Please join us for part two this Thursday. Music for Storied San Francisco is by Otis McDonald. Photography is by Michelle Kilfeather. The show is hosted and produced by me. Michelle and I have produced more than 120 episodes over the last three years, and you can find them all over at our website, storiedsf.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, as well as just about everywhere you can listen to podcasts. Please subscribe to stay up to date on all the content we publish. And if you have any feedback for us, or you just want to say hi, our email is storiedsf at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Stay strong, stay safe, and stay healthy. This podcast is a proud member of the BFF.FM podcast network. Learn more at podcasts.bff.fm. BFF.fm, best frequencies forever.